Well, we've told you repeatedly over the last couple of weeks about how the FAA, which is in charge of your safety when you travel by air, has altered its merit-based hiring testing for air traffic controllers, adding a bogus biographical questionnaire to the process. The new test's existence is bad enough. They are seeking out the unqualified intentionally. But even more worrisome than that is the fact that the FAA apparently didn't care if people cheated on their already watered-down test. In 2016, the Department of Transportation found that the National Black Coalition of Federal Aviation Employees had given its members guidance on how to answer the biographical questionnaire so they could pass it. In other words, the group helped them cheat by giving them the correct answers ahead of time. Cheating on a federal hiring test is a crime, and it ought to be, and yet despite that, nobody was ever charged. In fact, one union member connected to the cheating appears to be still employed by the FAA. Michael Pearson is a former air traffic controller. He's an attorney, and he's involved in litigation surrounding the FAA's hiring practices. He joins us tonight. Uh, Michael Pearson, thanks a lot for coming on. First, this is such uh, a strong allegation that I want to get to how you know this to be absolutely true. Well, it, it, I've been involved in this since it uh, actually began when I first heard about it uh, with the purging of the list of folks so uh, were watching your show. They remember that you had thousands of people on the list that were qualified, including military, with military experience and uh, aviation experience, and all of a sudden was purged in the FAA's words, and then folks were forced to go through this biographical questionnaire, which was designed by an outside vendor, and so for the last several years, including litigation that my firm, uh, along with Mountain States Legal Foundation, brought, we've been able to dig up information through the Freedom of Information Act process as well as the litigation process. So not only do we have internal people tell us this was going on, uh, that they were afraid that if they uh, would come forward, the FAA would penalize them, or the DOT would penalize them at fairly high levels of the government. Uh, but now we have actual documentary evidence that substantiates our worst fears. So the union helped people cheat on the test. Again, just to put this in context, to become air traffic controllers and control commercial aviation. Millions use it every year. People could die as a result of this. And yet no one was ever charged for that? Why? Well, it wasn't the union. It wasn't the air traffic controllers union. It was the NBCFA. It's a uh, employee group, the National Black Coalition of Federal Aviation Employees, certainly did that. Um, and it was a, a process started from um, early to 2012, 2013. There was a group within that organization who determined that the makeup of the workforce was too white. They wanted to get a more diverse workforce. They started lobbying through the political process, which is certainly allowed to. However, uh, they then crafted uh, this BQ exam, which not uh, it, it's not a screening test. It actually turned out that the scoring group for that actually penalized people with aviation experience, uh, yes. pilots, air traffic controllers. And then to make it worse, they had folks stand in line for this test that they, someone in the NBCFA had apparently gotten the answers to and coached other people how to pass the test. So not only were our best and brightest, as the FAA says, actually purged off the list, um, they then were forced through a screening process that discriminated against them uh, intentionally on the scoring of the test. So most, if not the, the great, great majority of them failed that exam while people were given the answers and how to pass the test. Even more important, recent documents show that when this individual was interviewed, he had given a written statement. Uh, saying that he didn't do that. Then he went into a verbal interview with a DOT OIG criminal investigator, said he didn't do it. He had his attorney with him. Incredibly, the DOT OIG investigator allowed him to see witness statements contradicting that and then allowed him to go out of the room with his attorney, come back in and change his story. Uh, that's just not done. Anybody in law enforcement or the law from the legal side, from an attorney side or criminal investigation side knows that that's beyond unusual. That's crafting an investigation to meet a predetermined outcome, i.e. nothing went wrong. This investigation was started due to people like Frank Lobiondo, Randy Holgren, uh, members of Congress on both sides of the aisle that were concerned about this process. And the DOT OIG investigator's final uh, result are basically his... Uh, his suggestion or his recommendation was that this not be forwarded to the Department of Justice for a criminal investigation. This thing started at the high level of the DOT. It's a cover-up at the very highest level, and you have all people, uh, people involved from both the DOT and FAA. And ironically enough, the architects, 
the implementers and the facilitators are still employed at high levels within the FAA. It's, they should, and I never say this, but these are people who should be in prison because they're imperiling public safety on a mass scale. At the very least, Tucker, what should happen is the DOJ, along with the FBI, should investigate what really went on and what really occurred. And then the process and due process of law should be followed. And the folks in the FAA at the highest management levels that designed this, the architects, implementers, and certainly the facilitators, should be brought to justice. As you say, it's both civilly and criminally illegal to do what happened here. The air traffic control system in a country, you're basically third world at that point. I mean, if you can't maintain high standards of air traffic control, uh, then it's over. Michael Pearson, thank you for that. You're very welcome, Tucker.